Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194, and I just want to say thank you for stopping in and checking out my video. And we're having another pros and cons, and this one is on the Ferrari 488. And um, kind of interesting because obviously probably you know not going to be driving it a lot uh, once the Evo comes out. Of course, they're pretty close to the same car. At least they look a lot the same, but I mean, I know there's some differences. Um, be very interesting to see the differences between the two cars. But anyway, in this video, um, of course, I'm going to cover the pros and cons and cover just a few setup tips and driving tips, not a ton. Um, and, uh, of course, show the setup to this track. And I will also put the link to the setup in the description, just like normal. So, um, so let's get started. Um, of course, just like always, I drove the car at many track, you know, many tracks. Um, a few tracks that it actually I didn't have a setup for, but I drove it there anyway, and just to see what it would do at a couple different kinds. So um, let's start with the cons first. And one of the biggest cons with the Ferrari 488 is definitely the gears. Um, you know, it's one of those love it or hate it things. I mean, the gear ratios, some tracks it works better than others. Um, but, you know, for the most part it's okay, but I think it hurts, where, really where it hurts is more on the acceleration side. I mean, if, you know, if they could, if they had the gear ratios better spaced and better, especially the, the higher gears where you're getting into fourth, fifth, you know, especially fifth is so tall, I mean, you got like fourth, fifth, and sixth, and they could shorten everything up, and you could go through all six gears better. Like here at Barcelona, I mean, I'm barely hitting sixty. I'm still in fifth now, just now hitting six, just for just a little bit. And that's it. And it's just you, so you're wasting, you know. Where if you could go right through the gears, it, I think it would help accelerate the car. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest negatives or biggest cons. Now, of course, I don't know. I don't know about the Evo. Um, maybe that's one of the things that they changed. I heard, it, uh, I heard that was one thing, but I mean, I don't know for sure. So, the, of course, we'll find that out here hopefully soon. Um, the next is the front tire wear. Um, the wear is, is about average, but I mean, and it could be just me, but I just, I have tried everything to, fi to find a way to, to try to stop it from raining. And I just can't, and everything I do, just doesn't really make a difference. I mean, I've tried, you know, different cambers, casters, you know, all kinds of different stuff, and it just doesn't help. I mean, everything, you know, as soon as you pick up the pace to get the car to to where it's, you know, competing at, at its higher level, I, it starts graining the tires. Maybe it's just the way I drive the car. I don't know, um, but all I know is it's. I, I, I've not found a solution. I mean, it, I don't think it really hurts the performance that much, but it's just aggravating as far as, you know, especially maybe, you know, if you were doing an hour stint with it, maybe it might hurt it a little bit, but it's just, I wish I could do better at getting rid of that on the setup, and I have spent a lot of time trying to get that gone, and for, no, for some reason I just cannot find the answer to that. Um, the brakes, um, you know, the brakes are in the middle of the pack. I'm not going to say, I mean, I put it as a con again because um, it's one of the things that stick out. But it's, they're not that bad. It's just that compared to maybe some of the other cars, um, I think they're not in the top top of the field. But they're still good. I mean, they're still not bad brakes. They're just, I wish they could be just a little bit better as far as stopping. Um, another con is I know there's I've watched a lot of other reviews on ACC and Ferrari and all the cars and other YouTube channels and they call uh, a lot of them have said that the Ferrari is a good car for a beginner I, I just don't agree with that I mean it's just my opinion but I just don't agree with it I mean it, it's just the car to me is got a little bit harder to get it set up right to get the pace out of it and also when you're really pushing it hard it can be a little bit trickier to drive so I and again that's with the mid-engine a lot of the mid-engines that are that way but to be honest with you 
Um, you know, the Honda's a little bit easier. The McLaren's definitely easier to drive. I mean, as far as just driving the car. Um, you know, the Ferrari is, to me, has great performance, but it's just not the easiest car to drive. It's just not, not for me anyway. And, I mean, I like it, though. I mean, I like it that way. you got to really drive the car. But, you know, again, that's just, to me, one of the cons. Um, and also, last con is, if you look at the car, it's got great, you know, it just, it's got great corner entry, which that's really on when I froze. But one of the negatives, it's got a little bit of mid-corner understeer, unlike some of the other mid-engine cars, like the Honda, like the... Lamborghini, like the Audi, they don't. They actually mid corner. They're really strong through the mid corner, but the Ferrari just seems to have a little bit of a mid corner understeer, and you just got to kind of drive around that. And um, and I mean, if you what happens is if you get it, try to rotate it too fast, then it's too loose, and you kind of go the other way, and the car is just fighting you. So um, it's just one of those things. It's just part of the you know part of the. DNA of the car. Um, but let's start with the pros. It's got a bunch of them. It's got a great chassis. Um, one of the best. It's a very stiff chassis. Communicates very well. And um, just works everywhere. So it's, it's really great. Um, adjustability. I mean, that could be a pro or a con. I call it a pro, but I mean, it's got a very fine adjustability. So, I mean, you know, if you want to make really small adjustments, you can do that because it's just got so many adjustments as far as, you know, sway bars, wing, all those kind of things. Um, it's got great top speed. So any track that's got, you know, some good straightaways, it's got to be good there if you set it up right. Um, just like here, I mean, you see I'm doing 165, 160. I mean, that's... That's pretty dang good going down to Barcelona. So, um, and it's not like I'm running like no wing. So the car's very respectable um, on, on straightaways. And one of the biggest things, which I should have probably put this as far as maybe even number one, but at least in the top, it's got awesome mileage. For what the car does, it is just great mileage. I mean, it's in the top three for sure. Um, as far as, you know, liter per lap. I mean, it, it's the only one to me that I know of offhand so far that from my testing and driving, Aston Martin is right there with it. But, I mean, they, they're pretty much neck and neck. I mean, this thing, so that's great because, I mean, that means if you're doing a 45-minute race or whatever, that's less fuel that, that you can carry than the AMG or the Porsche or the whatever. So, I mean, you know, less fuel is lighter. So that's where it gets, you know, it gets a good advantage off of that. And for the performance that the engine has, um, I really think that's pretty awesome how they can have that kind of, you know, speed and performance. But look at the mileage. It's just like, wow, you kind of have your cake and eat it too. So um, that is a huge pro for the Ferrari. Um, next is balance. I like the balance of the Ferrari, and that's with, you know, a heavy fuel load or an empty fuel load. The car stays balanced very, very good. Um, you don't get any kind of, all kinds of crazy back and forth as far as, you know, if it's heavy or, or light fuel or whatever. The car just stays very balanced throughout. Um, and also, you know, corner entry. It's got some, it's got great corner entry, like I said, on the cons. You know, with the mid corner understeer, but on the plus side, it's got very good corner entry. So, again, those are the pros. And let's get into some of the setup tips and driving tips. And first setup tip is the Ferrari is doesn't really like to be oversprung. Um, I'm not saying it wants lightweight springs, but just be careful on overspringing it. And I would was me I would definitely go on the light side I would go you know if I was debating on heavy or light I would probably go to the light side um, 
and that's because maybe because it's got a really stiff chassis. Maybe it doesn't need you know heavy springs. I don't know, but it just seems like the car likes it better that way. Um, it also likes more preload on the diff than just about most other cars, um, especially most of the mid-engine. Most of the mid-engine cars take, you know, they're all really close, but it seems like the Ferrari just seems like it takes a little bit more preload on the diff than the other cars to make it happy. Um, also, when you're doing, if you're doing a setup, it needs to be pretty level. Um, you know, it, unlike some of the other cars, especially front engine cars and things like that, or even the Porsche, I mean, where a lot of them, you got to give them a rake to them somewhat. The Ferrari is just overreactive with that. And I think it's because the car is so balanced that when you start jacking, you know, you, if you start getting way crazy on your uh, right height on the rear, it starts throwing the balance of the car off. And that's one of the strengths. So, I mean, we'll go over the setup, like I said, on this. And I'm not saying you can't do it a little bit, but uh, you just got to be real careful with it and not go too extreme on the right heights, on the rear. Um, a lot of times you're just going to be a little bit more than the front or maybe even at some places, uh, especially probably the fast tracks, you probably might be just level. You might not even have any rake. So it's just the Ferrari is that way. It doesn't, it just, it just seems to go with the car. Um, now, on the steering part, and on this car, I got under driving tips. I mean, I I set it at 760, unlike the other cars. Um, like the last one I did with the BMW, I had a 500. Now, this one, I got the rotation at 760, just because it, the car reacts fast. So, if anything, it's like the Porsche, and it's fast, and you... You know, you can end up overreacting too fast. I mean, you, you know, just a little input and you're going all over the place. So I slowed it back down to 760 for the port or for the uh, Ferrari, and it just seems like you have more control that way. And because the car doesn't need really help to react, it does it on its own. Second, I just try to be real smooth with the car. You know, if you're if you're real smooth, it re will reward you. Um, you know, going in, you know, I'm, 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 I try not to do too much of the late braking or trail braking or any of those kinds of things. I mean, if you do, you guys got to be really careful. I mean, it's 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 rewards you more on just, you know, smooth going in and just carrying through the corner speed and then, you know, and then smooth coming out. So um, that's what it seems like it, it reacts the best that way. Um, and, of course, I mean, I know this is... Um, everybody's different opinion on it, but I mean, of course, I think it's one of the best looking cars, and it sounds great too. I think it sounds good, but I mean, I love the way that it looks, especially with that mean diffuser like that right there on the rear. That's got one of the sickest diffusers on the back. But I just, I just think it's an awesome looking car. Um, now, as far as tracks, to be honest with you, it'd be easier to find the tracks that it it probably doesn't do as well at, because <laughs> really. The Ferrari is one of the fastest cars. I mean, I really call this near the top. It's probably in the top three, three or four fastest cars to me overall in ACC. Um, you know, it can work anywhere. So there's really not a track you're going to go to that it's not going to work. Um, the only track I, I, I've been just rattling trying to think of where I've not done as good with it. And the only track I can think of that maybe I struggled a little more than normal would be Brands Hatch. Um, you know, it does great at Laguna Seca, it does, you know, it does, you know, good at Zolder, um, those are short tracks, but Brands Hatch, for some reason, it just, I, I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't seem, just, and again, it's not like it's terrible there, it's just maybe not as strong as it would be at other places, but pretty much, I mean, you know, any other place, Silverstone, Barcelona, you know, Monza, no, even Paul Ricard, um, you know, I mean, everywhere you go, the cars, you know, Evergreen, everywhere you go, it's going to be pretty, pretty, you know, pretty decent or near the top of the charts. So I don't think it'd be an issue there. Um, and that is about it. Um, 
Again, I'll, we'll go over the uh, setup here. Should have showed the inside and car camera here. Uh, I think this is the last lap. First one thing I do like, it's got the screen also on the inside, you know, the TV, which some other ones do, but you can actually see it in the, you know, in the cockpit when you're driving compared to some other ones that are like out of sight. So I kind of like that. I do wish it had a little bit more liveries. I mean, unlike the Audi that's got, of course, it's probably the best with all the liveries. But and even the AMG's got a ton of liveries. It just it doesn't seem like the Ferrari doesn't have as nice a livery as a lot of the other cars. So that's kind of a, a bummer about it. Kind of just a real minor con, uh, but still. Yeah, that was the last lap. And we'll go over the you know, we'll go over the timetables and things like that and the setup. But I mean it's just a look at that. I mean what a beautiful car. I mean, no matter if it's just in that color, any, pretty much any color, to me, it's just a gorgeous car. So let's go to the garage. Now, at timetables. Here are the times. Um, I started eighth, finished second. Uh, the AI is at 100, just like normal. Same, you know, same settings. Um, but you can see, you know, I mean, you can run 44s with it. Uh, pretty decently I mean of course again you know I ran some lower 45s a couple of laps I kind of messed up or I just made mistakes but you know there's a lot of 44 eights nines even the last lap was a 44 eight so um, you know I'm, I'm again that's to me for me that's right near the top of the list so I'm really happy with that um, the setup Got 25.8 on the left front, 26 on the left rear, 27.2 right front, and 27 right rear. Uh, the toe is negative 0.6, and the camber is negative 3.8 on the left front and negative 3.6 on the right front. The caster is at 16.5, and the toe on the rear is 0.1, with the camber at negative 3 on the left rear and negative 2.9 on the right rear. Electronics are 3, 5, and 3. Fuels, I had 45 liters for this race. Uh, one Number one brake pad. Mechanical, I had 34 on the anti-roll bar. 57 on the brake bias. 151,000 for the springs in the front with a 1,000 bump stop rate on the left front and a 900 on the right front with a one bump stop range. And on the rear, the springs 141,000 with a bump stop rate of 700 on the left rear and 600 on the right rear. And the bump stop range is 6 on the left rear and 12 on the right rear. And your roll bar is 15 with the preload on the diff at 100. And I did a bunch of moving around on that. Uh, the shocks on the front are 6, 4, 7, and 6. And on the rear, they're 6, 4, 7, 6. So basically the same. That's how balanced this car is. Uh, the arrow, I got 58 on the front, ride height, and 60 on the rear with a 5 rear wing and a 4 and a 3 on the brake ducts. And the front arrow variation is 0.9. And that's the setup. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would, please hit, give me a thumbs up if you would. It really helps with uh, the YouTube suggestions and all that kind of stuff. And any comments or feedback, I really enjoy it. So that's always welcome, and um, any support is greatly appreciated. And I hope you come back and visit again. Y'all take care. See ya.